Hello everyone, it's Derek here with Get Lost Trails. Today we are just north of Durango, Colorado, passing through the village of Trimble here, getting ready to hop on US Highway 550. We're going to take that north to Silverton, US 550 between Durango and Ouray area, that's known as the Million Dollar Highway, also sometimes called the San Juan Skyway. Pretty scenic route overall. From there, around Silverton, we'll be picking up the Ofer Pass, which will take us on over to the town of Ofer across the mountain range there. After that, we'll be headed up to check out Alta Lakes. I believe there's a, a ghost town up there. And a lake, obviously. Planning on maybe camping there for the night. It's pretty close to Telluride. I won't be going into Telluride today but planning on going up to tell you right tomorrow so be sure to stick around for that from there we'll be using the last dollar road to head on up to ridgeway and then back around to silverton should be a fun time thanks for joining me enjoy the ride About 30 miles or 48 kilometers north of Durango, we're passing the south side of Old Lime Creek Road. Fun little 10 mile, 16 kilometer stretch of gravel that runs parallel to US 550, skirts you around the Coal Bank Pass. I've driven that before, I'll be skipping that today. Actually, I've done a video on that. Uh, be sure to check the video description or the link on the screen for that. Pretty close to Coal Bank Pass. That will be our first of three passes on the route today. Headed up Cold Bank Pass here, and then over Morwest Pass. And then eventually up past Silverton, we'll be jumping off onto the gravel and up and over Ofer Pass. Summiting Cold Bank Pass at an elevation of 10,640 feet. There are some Forest Service outhouses here. Uh, I will warn you, my experience is they're usually a disaster. So, just for the sake of being thorough, uh, let's go check them out. Oh yes, no toilet paper as usual. You can see the riser is destroyed. I'm a little surprised there's not shit on the wall. Bags of dog poop, that's nice. I think for the sake of being thorough, we should check out the other bathroom. Ah, also no toilet paper. Somebody did. Oh yeah. So this is option two here at Colbank Pass. If you'd like to use this toilet, it's even worse than the other one. Coming into Mollus Pass here, I guess my other camera didn't come on for this segment, but it's located just about seven miles or 11 kilometers north of Colbank Pass. You go down just a little bit and come right back up. It is an excellent view up here at Mollus Pass, so if you have to decide to stop at one or the other, stop at Mollus, there's not much of a view at Colbank. Made it up here to Molus Pass Summit at an elevation of 10,900 feet. I'm gonna walk over and have a look at the view here in a second, just as soon as we check out the conditions of the vault toilets. A disaster as usual. Nice view from up here on Mollus Pass. Off in the distance behind us there, you can see Mollus Lake. 
We're going to continue on Highway 550, not too much further on up to Silverton from here. Probably run about town just a little bit there, check it out. Although I will be headed back there tomorrow as well on the loop that I'm taking. Maybe grab some lunch or fix some lunch. I have lunch with me and then head on up towards Overpass. Coming down off of Mollus Pass there. Off to our left, up the road is Little Mollus Lake. Pretty soon off to our right up here will be Mollus Lake or Big Mollus Lake, I guess you could call it. There's Mollus Lake off to the right. The city of Silverton does operate the campground here. Basic sites are $25. Premium view sites are $45. There's no hookups. At the campground, there is potable water available, as well as hot showers currently costing $5. The campground does take reservations on all their sites, so you'd probably want to check in advance at mollusslake.com for that. Here we can see Silverton off in the distance there in the valley. Should be down there in just a few minutes. Yeah, we're just above the town of Silverton here. Now to get where I'm going today, I do not need to go into town. I'll just go around the curve here and continue on at 550 a little ways. But we are going to run into town, have a quick look. We'll be back here tomorrow, I believe. Coming into Silverton here, the town was formed in the late 1800s around the local mining industry. That's all but faded away today, last mine closing in 1992, although I'm sure there's some local prospectors still out there trying their hand at quick riches. Silverton never was a big town, running around 1,000 to 1,500 people on average, with the highest population of over 2,000 people in the early 1900s. Today, the town pretty much relies on tourism to keep it afloat, as it's a popular destination for outdoor activities, lots of hikes in the area, including one of the more popular hikes, Ice Lakes. Be sure to check out my video on that. I've hiked up there before. Lots of off-roading in the area as well, with the Alpine Loop being a popular destination for ATVs, dirt bikes, off-roaders of all types. Keep in mind, though, you can't drive an unlicensed vehicle through Silverton anymore due to new restrictions. Silverton, believe it or not, with a population of only 612, is the county seat and only incorporated town in San Juan County which only has a population of 646 itself, according to the 2020 census. San Juan County is about one-third the size of the smallest state in the Union, Rhode Island. Rhode Island has about one and a half times more people in a square mile than in the entire county of San Juan. I'm going to hop off here at the city park, fix me a quick bite of lunch, and then head back towards downtown and see if I can catch the Durango and Silverton train arriving. The Durango and Silverton steam train runs daily from around the first part of May to the end of October, roughly. Departing Durango at 9 a.m., arriving here in Silverton at 12.30 p.m., headed back at 2.45 p.m., and arriving back in at Durango at 6.15 in the evening. There's a diesel train that also runs daily for part of the season as well, just a little earlier arrival and departure times. I've had a privilege of riding the train a few times. Never made a video on it. Maybe one of these days I will get around to it. 
It's a very scenic experience, even if you're not into trains, but it's a lot of fun to be pulled over the mountain by a couple chugging steam engines. It is an all-day experience if you ride round trip to Silverton and back, but I've really enjoyed it, and if you have the time to do it, I would recommend it. It's just a short drive, about five miles or eight kilometers from the edge of Silverton up to the turn to Overpass. If you have a death wish, you can continue a few more miles on up the road and take Black Bear Pass into Telluride. Coming up to the turn for Ophir Pass here. Off to our left. Hard left downhill. Kind of a blind corner too. San Juan County Road 8 for Service Road 679 here. It takes us over the mountain and into the village of Ophir. I don't remember what the total distance of this route is, but I'll add that to the screen here. Wow, am I here already? Well, I've already made it to Ophir Pass. Now it's time to go down the other side. Yeah, let's stop first. It looks rainy over there. I'm not gonna be able to get my kickstand down here, am I? Made it up here to Ophir Pass at 11,789 feet of elevation. Pretty short drive up here, not a bad drive either. Another 3.6 miles, five and three quarters kilometers, I'll be down in the town of Ophir. A little bit of a shelf road on the other side, I believe, could be the more challenging section of the route. I've seen a lot of vehicles up here, pretty popular route, really cuts off a lot of miles if you're headed over to Telluride for sure. But it is a little rocky, so totally worth it though. So about the time I got ready to go, there's like tons of traffic. So I'm waiting. I'll have to just go ahead and apologize for the poor quality and lack of video coming down the west side of Ophir Pass. A lot of times I just cycle my camera on and off with the record button. And I guess I kept turning it off when I thought I was turning it on and turning it on when I thought I was turning it off. And I was too stressed out to realize that's what was happening. So there are limited clips from coming down, but I'll go ahead and show you what I got. And you can kind of see what the rock condition is like. It's a lot of larger, loose rock. It's not set in place and not packed down. It moves underneath your tires. And I found it pretty challenging for myself, but a person with more experience probably would have less trouble than I did, but it was a little tougher than I expected, I guess. 
I also apologize for making you sit through this terribly shaky clip. I know this is difficult to watch, but I think it gives you a good idea of how rough this actually is. The GoPro is trying to stabilize the video, but I'm moving around so much, I guess, or the camera's moving around so much with me. Uh, I'm not sure what happened here, but I think it gives a pretty accurate visual representation of how rough that is. I'm guessing maintaining a little more speed would have probably helped me keep my balance a little better. I was a little afraid of launching myself off the side of the mountain though. So I probably went a little slower than I should, which resulted in me falling over slowly a few times, but I would rather have done that than plummeted to my death. So as you'll see here, I eventually made it down, but it took a while. It took a lot longer than you're gonna see in this video. I took several breaks. I had to stop, de-stress, get my concentration back and take another stab at it, but we made it eventually. Well, I make it a few hundred feet, and then I have to stop it for a rest break. Uh, I'm not kidding. This, this is the this is part of the Colorado BDR. Um, it's pretty tough, and I'll just tell you. I generally, I'm the kind of person. I guess I think I prefer going up. I think I'm about through the tough part of it, though. Um, I'm only on a 650. I met a guy, another guy on a Aprilia 660 or something, and his buddy won a GS1200. And the guy on the 1200, uh, he's a big old boy, and he he shelled out his clutch coming up this. So I helped them turn that around, and he's coasting it back towards Ofer. Um, they're along ahead of me now because they're they're making better time than I am with a broke down motorcycle. But it's kind of wanting to turn misty. I was hoping to get my drone out and fly this. This is very pretty, but I mean, it's just, it's gotten overcast and drizzly. And honestly, I'm just getting wore out. I'm ready to get to camp. It's almost, what is it? What time is it? It's like, not that late even. It's 3.10. So we're going to try to carry on here and uh, see if I can get on down to Ofer. You can see it off in the distance there. I mean, it's a couple miles away. So here we go. Yes, luckily I made it through that last rocky section without falling over again. And I got enough composure to realize that my camera was all screwed up and I got that squared away. So now we got some forward facing footage. Coming into the town of Ofer here. Don't blink or you might miss it. It's been a long time since I've been through here, but the last time I was through here, they still had a post office and a zip code, which is crazy. Well, I thought we went through all of Ofer. It turns out that was the new subdivision of Ofer that we went through there first. Looks like we are currently entering the old part of town here, historic Ofer, Colorado. Nestled here in the mountains at the base of Ofer Pass. It's a pretty little community, I will say. This would be a very neat place to have a home. 
I don't know what those people are doing, but stopping in the road, I guess. It's just a little over two miles, about three and a half kilometers from the town of Ofer on a decent gravel road over to Colorado 145. From there, it'll be a couple more miles on the highway up to the road to Alta Lakes. Turning on to what is just commonly called Alta Lakes Road here, it is technically also Forest Service Road 632 and County Road 64F. It's going to be about four and a half miles or 7.2 kilometers on this up to Alta Lakes where the road does end. Particularly special during the fall with the colors of the aspens. The lakes are pretty too, as you'll soon see. It's also neat to see the old ghost town of Alta. A lot of buildings still left there, including the boarding house, the mine manager's building. Unfortunately, the mill burned down in 1948. The town primarily was inhabited from the late 1800s to the mid 1900s. It's not really inhabited anymore, but at one time it was home to around 100 people. There's not a lot of published information about the ghost town of Alta, but it does claim to be the first industrial site to use Tesla's alternating current system. Not sure the current status of the properties and buildings here, if they're under private ownership now or what. One time I heard there was a plan to tear them down and build a housing development, which would of course have been terrible. It looks like there's some preservation efforts taking place but I'm not sure where everything stands. Of course, be sure to look with your eyes. Don't damage stuff. I'm sure I don't have to tell anybody watching this channel that, but you know, vandalism has, of course, been a problem at many of these sites over the years, and, and luckily this one's still in pretty good shape, and hopefully we can keep it that way. I made it down here to the lower of the three lakes here at Alta Lakes. There's some de actually designated campsites here, picnic tables in some of them, fire rings, outhouses. I haven't looked in those yet. And it's all free, which is nice. I found one there I kind of liked, but I haven't really went any further than this yet either, so it says no camping up here though, so uh, Oh, you know what? I bet you can't go past here, can ya? Or can ya? Oh, yeah. There's a spot. Site 1. What's wrong with that? That actually looks pretty nice. Here's the lower of the lakes. I am going to run on up here and check this out a little more. I don't know if the road goes any further than this. Private road, I think it says. Uh, yeah, private road. Can't go up past that. And you can't camp over on this side. So I better just get myself back over to one of those other spots. And I have to do a little exploration on foot, maybe. It's about five o'clock. I've made it up here to Alta Lakes. 
just off the highway a few miles. Really neat place to camp, it looks like. There's some designated camping areas, fire rings, even a few picnic tables, outhouses as well. This is about 13 miles or 21 kilometers outside of Telluride. Be headed on up to Telluride tomorrow to check that out a little bit. Right now I'm right here in Site 1, overlooks Alta Lakes back there. I'm gonna go ahead and set up my gear it kind of been acting like it wanted to rain a little bit, clouded up, spit a few sprinkles, but luckily hasn't done anything. I am hungry. The ride today has worn me out, and I haven't even went that far. That Ofer Pass down this backside, uh, yeah, it was kind of stressful, I will just say. But I guess it was a good experience for me. It's a pretty area, that's for sure. So if you feel confident enough to do it, I would recommend it. We're going to go ahead and set up camp, and I'll see you here in a bit. Finally got camp all set up. Making some supper here. It is spaghetti tonight. Real spaghetti though, not mountain house spaghetti. Homemade spaghetti sauce, pretty fancy, right? Got some fresh lake water here. Hopefully that fits. The pan is not quite round anymore after coming down Ofer Pass today. It got a little bit out of shape. I almost got a little bit out of shape. It was a an interesting ride, I guess you'd say. Um, I, I found it a little stressful for me. It's a very pretty ride. I would say I enjoyed it, but that would be partially a lie. I'm glad to be up here at the lake though enjoy my evening relax a little heading to tell your ride tomorrow after that we're headed up last dollar road back around to silverton via ridgeway and uh planning on probably spending tomorrow night in silverton so i'm gonna finish up cooking supper here and maybe get out and walk around a little bit check out the lakes a little and we'll see you in a bit it's time for an outhouse review We've got three to pick from. Which door should we open? It's actually not terrible. It's wanting to rain. There is a rainbow above all the lakes at the moment. Let's go over here and check them out. Well, I've got me a cup of tea. I'm walking about. The sun is working on setting here at Alta Lakes at an elevation of 11,300 feet or 3,444 meters. I have a feeling it's gonna be a chilly night here at the end of September, but a beautiful one. The rain is holding off. It's wanting to spit a little sprinkles now and then. Good evening from Alta Lakes. It's a little after eight o'clock here. I'm settled into my tent for the evening. It is dark out. It has been an interesting day. Overpass was a little more challenging than I anticipated it might be. I mean, it's rated as moderate, so I should have known, and I've driven it before in my Jeep, but it's been a long time ago. And driving it in a Jeep is a little different experience because as long as you keep the Jeep on the road, the Jeep 
tends to stay upright. The bike, can, <laughs> that can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes, especially on loose, steep rocks. Uh, I went from the east side to the west side. If you're riding it as part of the Utah BDR from south to north, you're going to ride it the opposite direction that I did. You're going to go uphill on the steep section, the tougher section, I would say. The east side is very easy, pretty much. I mean, as far as routes go. The west side is the tough side of it. But I made it. Made it up here to Alta Lakes by evening as I planned to. It was about 75 miles, 120 kilometers for me from Durango today, I think. I, I rode a little bit further than that. I had some pavement prior to that. Tomorrow morning, we're headed on into Telluride. Short drive on into there. Going to scope town out a little. Then we're taking the last dollar road. It's just kind of an easy rated trail. Gravel. It's a gravel road, basically. Up north towards Ridgeway, where we'll pick up the highway. And then come back down US 550 through Uray on down to Silverton, where we'll check out the Red Mountain Mining Area. Probably spend tomorrow night in Silverton. That was kind of my plan anyway. We'll see how tomorrow goes. A little bit of a chance of rain, I think, in the afternoon, but maybe we can knock out most of the day prior to that. We'll see. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm not sure if this will be one long video or tomorrow will be broken into a separate video. But if it is, be sure to watch the next video. Otherwise, stick around for tomorrow. I'm sure it should be a pretty scenic ride. Thanks for joining me again, and good night from Alta Lakes. It's a pretty nice view of the mountains from here, nearby the toilets. <laughs>